We're ranking more of the most popular commanders in a tier list. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. We got more videos. There's still video every single day, uh, even though it was an error earlier this week. If you want to support the channel and make sure there's no more errors, that will definitely do it. You got to go to Patreon. That'll fix all the errors, and you give us money, and then the channel will be better. Yes, and BZ won't say the word error anymore after you give us money. We promise. Uh, also, if you want to support us indirectly, you can go to tcgplay.com. Affiliate link in the description. You go there to buy magic cards. And as long as you start with our affiliate link, you'll buy those cards at the exact same price. But this YouTube channel will be supported. It'll be indirectly supported by you doing the thing you already wanted to do. We're sponsored by Moxfield. You can guess right now where the mid-roll ad's going to be. You're going to be wrong. And I'll even extend you one greater. Up until the exact moment we talk about Moxfield, you will not know when it is. Yeah, exactly. You'll never be able to get it. And if you do... You cheated, and happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. All right, this is pretty simple. This is a tier list, and we're going to do it based on our opinion. Completely. How fun is it to play? In our opinion. How good is it as a commander? In our opinion. So you're going to see something on here, and you're going to 100% disagree. You can leave a comment. I encourage you to leave a comment, but I promise you this is opinion-based, and you can't argue with an opinion. Yeah, we just kind of don't like some of these cards, and I guarantee one of them is going to be your favorite. And I'm almost sorry. And we're going to like some of the cards, and you're going to be like, that one's not fun. That's going to be fair, too. This is this is the nitpicking nerds tier list. Let's do it. Just let me grab the computer real quick. Uh, and now, do you know what we have to do? Our shrinky dink move. Our patented shrinky dink move. And we're tiny in the corner, never to be big again in this video. No, not until you leave and go to another video. First one is Adrix and Neve, twin casters. They're copying... Tokens is basically parallel lives in the command zone. Yeah, I think this card's really cool. Uh, honestly, don't really have an issue with it. This one's like a How solid. Could you? Yeah, this one's like a solid A. Uh, there's some like really pop offy stuff that can be unfun, and also it's in Simic, the good stuff colors. But at least this gives you a direction compared to most Simic commanders that are just like good stuff. Hey, uh, draw some cards. Hey, put cards in your deck, and I'll draw you more cards. Oh boy, it's Uro. Oh boy, it's Kinnon. Pay Here. mana to draw cards. Like, this one's like oh. I really want to make tokens. Yeah, you want to make tokens. It doesn't, and this one doesn't care if you go big tokens or wide tokens. That's what, that's unique about it. A lot, of, a lot of token commanders tend to say do one or the other. This one says do either. Make a twenty twenty token. I'll, I'll or make copy it. Forty one ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the next one is Brago King Eternal. Mostly a totally normal commander. It's like a huge threat. It can go infinite, which is like. Mm. Yeah, Brago is good, uh, and, but like you said, there is always the threat that this thing could just absolutely go infinite and pop off. It's just a good magic card, right? Like, it's super strong. It basically gives all your sub vigilance. It just has to connect. If your opponents are protecting this, like the player that's playing it, if it has a swift foot boots or a greaves on it... Oh, I'd be real scared. Yeah, now this thing is all of a sudden the biggest threat on the battlefield. I think this one's a B. Uh, it's a blink commander. It's good. I'm not annoyed by it, but I do know I have to keep it off the battlefield. If I see Strionic Resonator, I will be annoyed by it. Where are we going to put it? Like C? <laughs> put it in B. Yeah, I'm totally fine with B. I think that B fits it fine. I think it's a strong card. I think it's in a good archetype that people enjoy. But I do think the Strionic Resonator thing can make it a little unfun. Yeah, let's go to Captain Ingathrod. This card is, like, really juiced for some reason. It's, it's like, kind of mill, kind of horrors, but mostly you could just mill people and take their best stuff. But what I really like about Captain Ingathrod specifically is that it is nerfed a bit by it being a horror. Yes, you can mill, but mill cards aren't good, right, overall. So you have to play these weak cards that, like to make this this really strong card work, which is an awesome design. I'm just like an S for this. I think... Yeah, what's I don't see any problem with this. It's just a really good card. There's not like cards that pair with it really that make you lose the game immediately or anything. It's just great. I think it's like I think this is like the perfect commander design where it's like this is strong, it's good, but you're forced to do janky things to make it good. That's a good card. Yeah, like I don't want the human version of this. Yes, exactly, because there's too many good humans. It would just absolutely run away with the game. Yeah, this the Captain Ingathrod is awesome. And I also like Dina a lot. Dina is part of a two card combo in the command zone. Don't like that as much, but as, the, as far as the actual card goes, super simple, super clean, all everything we got going on. Yeah, I think that this card is fine outside of that combo. This this one reminds me a lot of Brago. I kind of like this one more in A. I think it's a really strong, fun, cool card to build around, but the fact that there's a two-card combo with it really takes the fun down where it's like, anyone who sits down with Dina, I have to watch out. I have to be aware that they could play their commander in one other card and the game ends. Yeah, I just had to think, like, what's the best Dina deck? Well, it has Exquisite Blood in it. It of, just does. So I have to, like, 
either confirm that you're not playing the best version for fun reasons or for personal preference, or just kill it. Yeah, exactly. So, so Dina's not going to stay on the battlefield, or Dina's going to stay on the battlefield and win in two turns. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to first sliver. Slivers have Cascade. Slivers, 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 Sliver. Or you're playing CDH, but we're not, so Slivers. Yes. Uh, also, this isn't even a CDH commander anymore. This is oh, like, yeah. That's old school. Every time a new five-color commander comes out, it somehow pushes out the previous one. Yeah, this one, this one's long gone. And this is where personal preference comes in because Slivers is one of the most popular and beloved creature types of all time. Like, by the nitpicking nerds? But not by the nitpicking Ooh. nerds. We very specifically don't like Slivers, actually, and we think they're really boring. My main issue is it feels like you have three flex slots in a deck. Like, you get to make, you, you select the best 50 slivers, throw them in your deck, and then there's seven, what, flex slots, and that's it. That's literally the deck. Yeah, and if you take out Mana Weft, Gem Hide, Cloud Thresher, and Blur Sliver, your deck now does nothing except eventually combo, maybe, or get some kind of critical mass of slivers. But, like, I very much dislike how those four slivers are, like, the backbone of the entire deck. And the rest of it's just like random stuff. Are we cool with poop? Uh, D. I, I was thinking D because I do think it at least has something to it. Like it, it just puts me to sleep. It's a tribe deck. I think it is a boring deck overall, but it's not broken. It's not busted. It's just. Slippers. I mean, this card actually is kind of messed up. Well, yeah, you can you can do a lot of really good things. With it. I mean, I would absolutely put this in poop tier if it was like Sliver Queen. That is a poop tier commander. That is just a combo piece. Yeah, that just makes slivers that make mana that makes slivers. Let's go to Galia. She certainly has words after her first name, but we don't need to know them right now. Kindler of Hope. Kindler of Hope. She makes, uh, this is one of the first cards in that like cycle where they just started saying, hey, you know that underused card type? Let's just make you cast it from the top of your library. Yeah, it, it is. But I love this card. It is the first one that actually brought together the artifacts, uh, the equipment and the enchantments together into an actual good functional deck. And on top of that, like you do cast from the top, but you get something else. This isn't just cast from the top. You also cheat mana. You also cheat mana. You put them onto the battlefield and they auto equip if they're equipments. Yeah, I like that you can go auras, you can go equipment, you can go equipment auras. This card never did anything bad to anybody. It's just totally fair. It's just trying to live its life. This one's an S for me. It looks like an S for me too. Yeah, like I just, it just, it's fun, cool, and it's it, just like Ingathrod before. It is letting you do a really strong thing by playing jankier cards because auras and equipments are not a sh are not strong types in Commander, so you have to play those, and she rewards you for doing that. Yes, uh, Giada, Kindler, Font of Hope, Font of hope another Hope card. <laughs> <laughs> They're all hoping. This is Angel Tribal. She makes your angels really big. Uh, my experience playing against Cherry's Giada deck is that you are guaranteed to be ahead. By turn six, and then if you get board wiped, you probably lose. Yeah, you fall really far behind. This is this is an onboard deck. It really goes onto the board. It slams creatures. I really enjoy playing it personally, and I don't have any issues with it. It Me just neither. it just makes a lot of angels. It made angels more viable. I feel like angels was not a really viable tribe until Giada. Because this is the Captain Inga thread. It really juices up angels, but angels are bad. Exactly. Angels are pretty bad because angels cost too much on average. Like, the average angel costs, like, four or five mana, and that's way too much on average. I mean, let's go the other way, too. How many playable angels are in Commander? Like, three? Like, like playable outside you... of Angel Tribal. Yeah, like three, maybe less? There's probably there's probably a solid, like, six that are actually Because, like, I can't even think of one. Like, because there's Archangel of Thune. Okay, that's the, a good one. Is the first one that comes that's to my mind. There's, I think there's, like, five Atraxa. total ones. Atraxa. Atraxa. There there's, like, five total ones that are really, really good outside of Angel Tribal. So angels are just not a great type. I like it. I Just S tier for me. Yeah, I mean, it's the same exact thing as Horrors, except instead of, like, stealing everybody's stuff, you're just the best, you have the best board state. You just have huge, giant angels. And Giada just... She, she literally filled the perfect gap for angels. What was angels lacking? A way to get to four mana because every angel costs four mana. At least. Angels <laughs> start at four. I don't know. This is I don't know where else to say this. If you're if you have a Giada deck and it doesn't have Emiria's call in it, put Emiria's call in it. I don't care that it says not angel. You're making angels no, in your angel deck. There's no way anybody's not there's People. No, people are definitely excluding it. I don't think so. Guaranteed. I, the, well, yeah. If but. you know somebody or are excluding it. Tell us in the comments. You yeah, have just because it doesn't make the angels indestructible doesn't mean it's not amazing. <laughs> doesn't mean it's not an angel card or a land that it's a free roll anyway. Henzi, another cherries deck. What? Like two in a row. Henzi toolbox tour is my literal favorite commander to play. Period. I think even when you juice this thing to the max, it's not broken because it forces you to play so many creatures. I think it's just such a fun. 
fair commander. I think that the reason BZ tends not to have fun playing against it sometimes is the threat's always in hand. Uh, so if the threat's in hand, it's tough for a lot of players to see. Henzi is a card. I've, I've come to terms with this. You don't kill Henzi's threats. You just kill the Henzi player. Everyone else needs to come around to that in our play group, but that's where I'm at. Like, I, I'm fine playing against it. I think it's a cool deck. I think it's awesome, actually. I just need to kill cherries before they do anything. Yeah, uh, that's completely fair. You need to accept your fate. I'm on, I'm on S tier. I'm you. fine with it. It's one of my favorite commanders of all time. You know what? We'll even do this. It might, it might be my current favorite commander of all time. You know what? We'll do this. Let's put him up top. Boom. This is my favorite commander of all time. I, I mean, the deck is so good. I respect him for being so good and yet somehow still... No. Subtle at all. It's just, it is it is very subtle. To some people. Because I, you're, never, well, you're never out of a real board state. Your board state is Henzi and like, two mana doors. Oh, man. Guess I'll just kill Beezy's thing. It's like, you're going to lose. Uh, yeah. Keep, you're going to lose dead. Removing Henzi is tough. I mean, because even if you remove Henzi, it gets That's why more you just, powerful. You just have to kill the Henzi player. It's like, you had fun last game. You're done. You have to die. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Hinata. All right. We haven't really gotten there yet, but this batch of commanders, my God, there are some miserable cards in here. And Hanada is the first one. It turns all your X spells into just, you know, like red, red, deal one to every creature, or blue, blue, untap all your lands, or like X, blue, draw a card for each creature in play. Just really, really intense stuff going on. I don't like Hanada at all. I really think that this card is just miserable. Um, I don't think there's a fun way to build this deck, per se. I think it always ends up just being a super duper pop-off ridiculous over-the-top deck where if Hanada lives, the Hanada player wins, period. And then if it dies, all your hand is just terrible X spells. It's, yeah, it's really, really bad. So, it's just like the worst. I, I don't like this card I at think all. it's a poop tier. Yeah. Uh, Jetmere, Nexus of Revels, I promise, there's no BZ decks on here. This is the third Cherries deck. X -cherry Since deck. Deceased, uh, it's been taken apart. Why was that? Because uh, it was extremely unfun. It does the same thing every time. You make a bajillion tokens, play Jetmere, win the game. Or... Jetmere dies twice and you lose the game. Yeah, or you just don't, or you just play a bunch of token normal strategy. But the the, the thing is, you don't lose the game. That was even, what's even more annoying. There's a lot of games where it's like you would just lose, but this is a token deck, so it's like I'll just play a different payoff and eventually kill you. Yeah, I never, I didn't think you won that much with this deck, but I remember thinking like, and we always, I've said so many times now that Jetmere will be in play for seven seconds for the entire game, whether you win or lose. Yeah, like Jetmere is just not fun. I think this is like. Poopy tier. I think this is worse than Hanada. It just it's like it looks like it's totally fine and in the ninety nine, you know, it's whatever. But in the commander zone, it just does not work for fun. I agree with that. Yeah. That's good. Does not. Fair. Uh Joda dated um Joyra. Did you know that? It didn't work out. Yeah, that, it's really sad that it didn't work out. This there's two in a row here. This is the eternal Arc Mage, and this one you can cast its fist of Sons. You can play Wooberg instead of your spell's cost, so it's just the biggest, splashiest, Eldraziest things in the format go in this deck. Yeah, this this deck is fine, but also there's a lot of versions of it. Uh, the most powerful versions tend to be very boring and repetitive. Like, oh, expropriate. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're just casting expropriate. They're casting an Eldrazi. They're doing it over and over and over again. But there's fun versions of this deck where they cast like planeswalkers, know, big planeswalkers. Nicol Bolas. I think I'm on like C for this. It's middle of the road where it's not bad and it's not. It's not bad and it's not good. It's just, it literally is 100% dependent on the build. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. There's a card that is not dependent on the build and was pretty much the least favorite commander released this year of 2022. Year. And you know what? This year too. Uh, it's Joda, the unifier. It's coat of arms for your for your legends, but doesn't even say other. So like he's always uh, gets plus one plus one for himself, which is weird. And they start cascading into other legends. Yeah. So this one is just super unfun. It just turns out this card is so strong he's the enabler he's the payoff he does the one thing i do like is he sort of pushes you toward a little jank because there's not a ton of synergy between legends so it is a little janky you can't be like legend landfall that's not going to work you don't yeah. have there's not 40 legends that do that yeah so it's just not quite good enough uh to be like the most busted but i think it's an easy d i do think his card is very unfun you have to kill it over and over. Every time. And over. If it stays in the battlefield, it's over. It literally just code of arms your legends, so it's just done. Yeah, your legends get plus four, plus four. How many legends do you need? I mean, well, you'd have four at that point. Yeah, but you do. You have four. And if you don't, if you have five, six, seven, the numbers start getting absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, seven is 49 power, And right? every single legend comes with another legend. So if you cast a three-drop legend, you get a two or less drop legend. It's you won't ever have, like, Joda and then play one legend and have two. No, you'll have three then. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know what's a playable card in this deck? Rogue Rack, because you... Yeah, Ragavan, too. It's it's so funny. You If you cast a one-drop legend, you just go over until you hit Rogue Rack. Mm -hmm. It's silly. Is silly there, strong. Was that Jumpstart 
It's like female Rograk. She was one mana though, right? I, she has like Battle Cry. I think so. I think, yeah. I think the female Rograk does have Battle All right, Cry. Alright, Kozilek, the Great Distortion. He's here. You're just drawing you up to seven and he's countering spells. It, it's an Eldrazi. He's got Menace. Two hits and you're dead. Kozilek, I think, is an awesome card. Not the most fun card. Yeah, I don't think it's... I think this card is kind of miserable. There's two things about it. One, when you build it, it doesn't have much room to build at all. You're kind of stuck in a pool of what is probably solidly 100 playable cards because you're in colorless. So how many colorless cards are really, truly playable? It's not a lot. So you're stuck in this really tiny card pool for building the deck. And then once this is actually being played... It's going to be, if it's on the battlefield, it's countering every spell that's being cast. It's going to be super annoying. It's going to be super unfun. And then it's a two-shot on top of that. With Menace. So, like, Kozilek, wow. Kozilek is, is, is just pretty brutal. I was thinking this is probably one of the only commander decks you could ever build and still win games if you just put only ramp spells in. Yeah. Because, like, you just ramp to Kozilek, draw your deck. Well, draw your hand. So it's now you have counter spells to protect Kozilek, and you just smack somebody. Yeah, this is probably poop. I think this one is really... I love Kozilek so much. It's just... Not this, not this one it's just so not, much. It's just not a fun card. I mean, it doesn't... Kozilek is a cool design character, a very... Cool not, design card, like, for standard and stuff. This is what you need. It's like, you're going to dominate the game when this comes in play. It's just never going to be fun. There's not. A, is there? There's just no fun way to build Kozilek, right? No, I'm not going to counter your spells. I'm not going to... No, I'm no. going to cast it with seven cards in hand. It was no, no, 12, this 12. is my fun Kozilek deck. I only have 12 drops. Yeah, I only have 12 drops. Mock Dub, Raisin out. Cast Outlaw something. Not one of the, why do I not know card names? She makes treasures when your dwarves tap for mana. Yeah, I think this is a cool commander. Uh, it is a unique little strategy. It does have some annoying stuff. I know that this can be a very powerful commander when built the right way, even for Mono Red, which Mono Red isn't very strong. But she also pushes you to play some janky, fun cards. Mm-hmm. Like She's playing Springleaf Drums. She, yeah, or like Vehicles. She's playing Vehicles. She's playing the new three-mana pended thing. That le- then you can tap a legend to make a mana. Yeah, she's playing all those silly cards, and like I don't uh, this I don't really have a problem with this, but I'm also not super high in it because it's mono red. Like a B, B, B is a great grade for it. Feels about Brago esque. Let's go to Marchesa the Black Rose featuring Dead Man and Soup. She has a weird trigger that lets you steal creatures. It's like if I active treason your guy and then I sack it with a counter on it, well now I get it back to my control when it dies. Yeah, this card's just. Cool. I think this one is a very unique Grixis design, which I absolutely love because yeah, counters it, and stealing. It, it's like feels it feels Grixis, but at the same time, it's like new ground. Exactly. It's it's like it's it's a very different type of card. Yeah, you still get the black red like steal, sacrifice, act of treason type deck. That's been done before, but you getting them afterward, add it with the blue, just makes this unique. I think this one's also B, where it's it's a cool, fun, unique card, but it's also like not that crazy. Also, it steal your stuff. Not liked the most. I don't people, have a problem. People don't it. like this card. People don't like this card. We're, I'm for, fine with it. Yeah, I, for some reason, this is our opinion video. We're giving people credit uh, in our opinion video. Take your credit. <laughs> Take your credit. Marrow Nar sacks a rat and then makes a rat for each rat you control. Rat Tribal, probably one of the de facto Relentless Rats commanders, at least before Ash Code came out. Yeah, I think it's just it, this is long gone. Ash Code is showing there can be a good rat commander. This card is fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And rats have fear. Rats have fear. Rats do have fear. This card is totally fine. Again, I don't have a problem with it. But it's just like, it's rats. How good can rats be? How interesting can rats be? It's not even, it's not even multiple rats. It's like four rats. Unlike Ashcoat, who actually pays you off for being rats, Ashcoat is the Ingethrod of, uh, rats, of rats, where it's like, it takes a janky thing and actually makes it good. This doesn't really make it good. It's just kind of slow, janky. If it's unanswered for three turns, it's unbeatable, but that's, how, yeah, watch out for coat of arms, but yeah. that was always true. Yeah, exactly. I just give this one like a B or a C. Yeah, it's a C. It's just like very non-offensive, but I don't see too much appeal personally. I put yeah, like ash, like it's not the, rats are rats are fine, but I would put I'd put ash coat in like the A tier, but this one Marin on there. Yeah, you want to talk about commanders people were not enjoying too much? Miram Sentinel Worm. Turns out one of the most hated commanders released last year. It copies your dragons, but it doesn't even care about legendary. So what happens a lot of the time is like. Just clone Miram and then clone it again. Now there's three Mirams. And if you clone it again, there's more. And if you make other dragons, there's more. And it, it has wards, so it's harder to interact with. It's just kind of brutal. Yeah, exactly. I think the fact that it clones its, like cloning itself is the thing that actually works for this commander is what makes them fun. I think it just would be a big, splashy, over-the-top deck that you would see a lot of that wouldn't be too unfun if it wasn't for the fact that you just make 30 Mirams and then 50 other dragons and the game's over. Yeah, the green, I think, also makes it so that 
Miriam's going to be out four times a game. Like, that's a thing that can happen. Yeah. I kind of just have this one in C tier. I don't hate it. Yeah. But, it's but not I, my least favorite thing in the world. I think other people hate it more than me. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, this next one is actually really interesting. It's Obeka, Brute Chronologist. We're trying to, like, end the turn and then having all of the abilities that would end, end early so that we get, like, extra bonuses. The only thing about this card is it's so confusing because... People make, literally, if you go on the EDHREC.com, you're going to get cards that don't work in Obeka. We did a video about this. It's literally hilarious that, like, it's such a confusing wording. It can, it makes people put the wrong cards in their deck. Yes, you have to create a trigger to either return something or delay something that Obeka will then exile once it's on the stack, but you can't active treason something because it just says gain control of until end of turn, and then Obeka says, great, end the turn they get and back. Actress and says, "Okay, turns over. The effects end. Here you go." Yeah, and you just have to actually make it right. I think this card's really unique. This super off the wall and it, not offensive, not like uh, detrimental to gameplay. No, really, I think this one's just an S for me. Where it's yeah, like, I think so. This it's is a, such an awesome card. It was right so there. Cool. It was so cool when they designed it. I it was so weird. I mean, this, they made it so well, but so weird. Yeah, it's super bizarre. I, I think they just nailed it. Uh, this next one. Oh, I feel like we just had this one. This is actually Moxfield.com. It's the best way to build a deck online. Whether or not you're using it right now, you should be, because Redacted Site stinks, and yeah. you know it does. Yeah, I mean, Moxfield.com, honestly, you can build any one of these commanders on there right now, and any commander that's been spoiled from, say, the new set, like the new Elish Norn that everyone has seen and gets the... <laughs> is complaining about. And has seen and is complaining about. That Elish Norn already can be built on Moxfield.com, which is super, super awesome. Yeah, just out with the old, in with the new, get with the times. I understand that you used that old deck builder, you know, 17 years ago, but things can be so much better, and I think you'll really start seeing that when you use, when you give Moxfield a try. Yeah, yeah. So definitely we'll put it in S S tier where it belongs. How about Satoru Umazawa, the Joe Cherry's deck? Uh, Satoru Umazawa is an awesome deck. Never gets old. But it does have... Big downsides. When you build the maximized version that has Blightsteel Colossus, that has all the Eldorazi, it starts to become frustrating, annoying. This is the Dina and the Brago thing where it's like, hey, are you playing the optimized Satoru? No? Okay, well, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Because when you truly optimize Satoru, it just it busts down the game. It runs away with it. It one-shots player with a Blightsteel. It one-shots a guy on turn four, and then another guy, and then another guy. And or even like, a girl. Or even a girl. I don't know why they're all guys this time. I, th this time I was in the pod with four guys. Yeah, no, you actually weren't even in the pod. I, <laughs> the pod was four guys. You just can't. It wasn't no. even you. <laughs> Got him. Okay, Satoru, what are we thinking? A, a. I think it's such a fun deck It's, to it's play. a really cool idea. Aside from and like, watch out for the big boys. And like, look at my version of the deck. It's like how it's fun to play against because like it'll go over the top, it'll be silly, but it's not. It, it often doesn't win because it's not designed to be perfect. Yeah, even that deck in moderation though, because I still don't want you to get turn four ancient silver dragon or turn four Jingataxius. Yeah, Jingataxis. Still don't want those in play. Jingatax is a pretty mean card. <laughs> it's not the nicest. Sephiroth of the Hidden Ways, the dungeon commander done right. I don't have any complaints as far as making dungeons and venturing playable. Other than like this, this particular card, I think, is a little too wheel spinny. Yes, it goes forever. Like it never stops. When this card is going off, you are legitimately like going through a dungeon two, three, four, five times in a turn, and it's just like, what is going on right now? But it's not even like you know, if it was like deal two damage every time, it's like okay, deal two, deal two, deal two. It doesn't really affect anything. But you have to go consult your dungeon. Okay, scry one. Whoop. Okay. Now I do it six more times. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, oh, I have to choose. Do I want to make a treasure or a goblin? One second. Make a goblin. Okay, let me get the token. All right, oh, I have to venture five more times now. It's just, whew, they, something got messed up with this card where it just takes a little too long. Yeah. I like that dungeons are playable. I don't think that got messed up. I think it's just, it just the nature of the card and the way it plays just is... Yeah, love is. that there's a good dungeon commander. I will kill your sufferers every time. I'll give it Those a, are both true. I'll give it an A. Only because yeah. it spins wheels to it. It's a really cool, fun card that's strong. This card is actually strong. Like, not many cards that say dungeon on it are strong. Oh, they're not initiative cards, but that's not the point. And those are completely different. Uh, yeah, they're beasts. different dungeon. Uh, they actually don't even really say a dungeon on them, right? Uh, they're reminder text, I think. Reminder. It might be a reminder text. Uh, anyway, I'm the spin the wheel guys, and I'm still like, hey, sufferers is a little bit much. Because I think spinning wheels is great, but as long as you have, like, you have to end the game. Yeah. You, there's no point spinning if you're never going to stop spinning. Okay. Sure, Kai, Genesis Engine, another one of the least fun commanders, because it's not even a commander. It's just like a, 
a borderline enchantment that just sits in play and draws cards. Yeah, it's so annoying. It doesn't die to board wipes. It just sits there and like... Like it feels like, oh, they're making a legendary vehicle. Clearly they want me to crew it, right? Oh, I'm incentivized to never crew it. Weird. You really just never crew Shorokai. And that's the sad thing about this. this isn't This card doesn't do anything except for draw cards, draw two, discard one, get a pilot. Draw two, discard one, get a pilot. And you do... Literally nothing else with it because this card. Why would you ever crew an unevasive eight? And they even gave it crew eight so that you won't you won't ever crew it. You, you got to make f- how many pilots? You got to make three. three pilots before you can start crewing it. No, this card is <laughs> this card is just incredibly good. I have it down probably in like C tier, maybe D tier. I was gonna stick it in like F, so or poop tier. Sorry, there is no F tier. Uh, so let's do it in D. D. Yeah, I think there is fun, cool stuff about this card uh, in that it is a vehicle in your command zone. It's super unique in that way. And they the- just botched it it feels like it does it feels a little botched yeah I mean it just it, you don't want to crew it right like right. why do you want to crew an uninvasive 8-8 eight eight? with crew 8 <laughs> just, no oh I can just draw two I can just catalog every time well, this one can go you can just put this in poop before we even talk about it turd grid no that's yeah that's the bottom of poop tier yeah the absolute bottom buried underneath all the poop it's one of the least fun cards I've ever played against It it's just not fun I it mean, makes the game about itself you either kill the turd grid and the Turgrid player, and they don't get to really do anything, or you don't get to do anything. The problem is Turgrid's a two-card combo, but it doesn't matter what the combo piece is. There's a there's about thirty cards. It's smallpox works. in the in the deck that just make this thing absolutely ridiculous. This thing is good with Thoughtseize. That's how weirdly strong this magic card is. Death Cloud, Death, smallpox. It's just like all these cards, just regular pox. These just result in a win. You don't like. It's not like, oh, you're kind of ahead. It's like, no, you're so far ahead, the players can't come back from it. But it also shuts down a few other, like, essential parts of some decks where, like, oh, I can't rummage. I can't discard to find things. I can't yep. sacrifice my fetch lands. I can't do all this stuff because then the Turgid player gets it. It's just, you got to, like, walk on eggshells through this thing, and you have to kill them immediately or you die. Yeah, you it's kill Turgid or don't play, or you or lose the Turgid. Because Tur- if they untap with Turgid and nobody answers it, they, I've... 90% chance you're dead. Yeah, I, I think I've seen like one turn ever where a Turgid player untapped and it wasn't just GG. And we were like, oh, oh what is this? But you are no favor. You're in poop tier. Yeah. Volo. Volo is less fun than it looks, I feel like. Oh, man. See, I'm, I'm really high in Volo, personally. Like, I think Volo is cool. I like the design. But as far as what he asks of you, you don't actually have to play one of every creature and never duplicates. You could play three of every type in your deck. This card's still amazing. Yeah. It doesn't actually ask that much of you. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't ask a lot of you, but it does ask you to play obscure types, some of the better types, and not just repeat over and over again. Because if you look at an average deck, if you just look at a Simic deck, and you look what creature types overlap, there's a lot of overlap. There's a few humans, few wizards. Yeah, incidental overlap, just all over the place. And you're going to have, like, six or seven of, like, the most popular creature types. I like trying to avoid that. And if I built... Volo, personally, one of each. It'd be literally, I guess. That's the honest way. One of each. It. And then th- that's a super fun. And I like how fun it is as a build around in that sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to put them that low. I'd probably put them at B. So where would you put them? Uh, I would put them in A. All right, so top, top of B. Top of B is fine. Move over, Marchessa. Who's next? Who's next? Winota. And this one, I think, is almost purely popular from the CDH standpoint because this is not a card that I have personally ever seen a set no. of CDH. Um, and obviously, we have a low sample size. There's lots and lots of games going on outside of us. High relative to most people who play Magic. That's fair. We low have... in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, exactly. I've just really never... I've never seen anyone have a Winota deck that wasn't CDH. It's, it's like an undeniably good card, right? The card is amazing. It's banned in things. But I think the reason... it's it, The things you're cheating out in uh, a normal game of Commander where everyone's doing big, splashy things aren't that good. Cheating out a Thalia isn't good in a being, standard game of Commander. Being stuck in red-white is going to vastly reduce what you can do. Yeah, exactly. So I think, uh, and like, and also one of the the reason Winota is so good in CDH is when you attack with your creatures, you get stacks pieces. That stop people from winning. So no one's going to, no one wants to play that in a casual game. So I'm just kind of on C tier where it's like... I have nothing, I have nothing against Winota. I might... Build a deck with Winota at some point. I think, I like you, like I said, I think the problem with Winota is the best hits of Winota are all stacks pieces, right? I think Almost so. Almost all of them, like Draenei's Magistrate, Thalia, Thalia. Uh, all of these things are just stacks pieces. Do you remember when people were cheating in Agent of Treacheries? In uh, like, what format was that? Standard. Standard? Literal standard. Wah, yeah. wah. Yeah, it was not fun. Zer, the Enchanter, he goes and finds Necropotence and goes and finds Steel of the Godhead and goes and finds... Curator's Ward makes himself hexproof. If I I don't know how long this guy's been popular, but I feel like Posty probably did some 
Hey, working, shout pop, out to our boy Posty. Popularizing Zura. It's one of his favorite commanders. He's got the Posty the Enchanter, right? He's got he's got one, he's got a one of a kind uh, Zura the Enchanters. Yeah, looks pretty cool. It's really cool. It's really cool. It's really cool. Uh, but I don't think Zura's very fun overall. No, <laughs> because it's a tutor stapled onto a creature that's like, hey. Don't you want more tutors? You better protect me with the first tutor. They just keep tutoring and tutoring and tutoring, and they can't respond to Steal the Godhead coming out because you already got it. And if they do, you have to stop them before they choose. And then at that point, why don't you just kill Zerg? Now they're getting necrophones. <laughs> yeah, why? Like, why did you wait for the trigger? Yeah, you you're so bad at magic. Yeah, what are you doing? Why? I think I'm in D tier for this one. It's I not think poop, so. but it's pretty boy. It's pretty. It's pretty rough. This was basically like a rectangle. You yeah. know, there's like uh, Hope Galia Hope person was over here. Maxfield obviously has to where it belongs, but other than that, we had a rectangle. Yeah, it is It is rectangular. If you'd like to see less rectangles, the last episode of this where we talked about commanders that are even more popular than these has no rectangles. Squares, though. Better watch it. Which are rectangles, so BC's just incorrect. Peace out, Tribe Scouts. <laughs>